Oh, well that was no good. Welcome back. Another day, we're gonna do some more wiring today, funnily enough. Um, I don't even know what day it is. I've lost day of how many days we've been doing this for now, but we're back on it. Ready for another wiring adventure. So, we're inside. Uh, excuse my bed. Oh, I've been looking for this torch. Um, today, I'm gonna quickly measure up the drive-by-wire pedal. Um, obviously, it's gonna live over there in Australia. In America, it's gonna live over there. Uh, we're just gonna measure out how long this needs to be and then I'm gonna print off a diagram that we've got on our server uh, here at Haltech for this exact pedal. Uh, it's around here somewhere uh, for this connector. So I'm gonna get a diagram. We're gonna split the ground and the five volts uh, twice because there is six pins in here for two pedal circuits. Um, so as you press this, one circuit goes up and one circuit goes down and the ECU looks at both of those together uh, as a safety measure for the drive-by wire. So we're gonna quickly measure up that. We're gonna split these up because I've got two buttons over there which I need to wire up as well. And the ignition switch for the ECU, which powers it all on, that's gonna live over there as well. Uh, I don't really wanna get under there that badly. So that should give us just a little bit of leeway and a margin of error because this might not be exactly where it needs to be but we could loop it up and go the long way around if it's a little bit too long um, again never come up short so we've put the braid sleeving over the top of this uh, wire that we have run through for the drive-by wire. Um, we've got it roughly 10 centimeters longer than we need, which is perfect. Um, we're just gonna route that the long way and just make it go where it needs to go. Uh, I've got the pedal in this mess here somewhere. And the original plug that came from the car. Um, the factory wine colors uh, and the pedal diagram was a little bit hard to find on, uh, on the web, uh, but I managed to find something in a factory manual. So I've actually uh, contacted Dave from Haltech in sales and tech support, and he's made an awesome diagram for this uh, pedal, which is great. So um, if you ever need pedal diagrams, by, by all means contact Haltech and we'll see what we can find in our resources to try and give you a hand with all that sort of stuff. Definitely not a problem at all. Um, we're not gonna use the factory connector with the wires. Um, by all means, if you can't get a replacement, this is gonna be the, the way to go. So you can either put a new plug here, which will join the wires that are coming in from your new installation uh, onto the existing wires, or you can get a brand new connector absolutely go that way it's the best way to do it for sure so brand new pins brand new seals brand new connections reliable and you know that it's done right just gonna cover these joins up real quick with some heat shrank delightful This is not any of the crazy dual wall heat shrink. This is just normal heat shrink because it's all inside and it's nice and compact. And it just works for what we're trying to do here. Pull off my hold the braid back tape. Because I don't actually need this in place there anymore. Starting to fray a little bit at the end there, which means I obviously forgot to melt that and protect it before. 
and then burn your fingers. Oh, jeez. Great incentive for doing it the first time right. And then that's probably where my heat shrink will end up going and then it'll just give us a nice bit of flexible bit of wire so we can uh, put that plug on there and that plug will probably sit about there. So it should be pretty good. keep that in place that'll keep that in place and let's have a look at our diagram and figure out where these six wires need to go there's our diagram real quick just there um, strip the ends off we'll crimp some pins on um, and then we'll get this connector out which you can see in here should be fairly straightforward um, we'll just figure out which way is the back, which one's the front. But that's pretty much us, so we just gotta follow the diagram. Um, I'll do the first one and then we'll uh, we'll get it all plugged in. So I've just got my last one to do here real quick. It's a nice good connection. Now I'll just get in there and just make sure that they're all pretty good. Bent maybe a few of them just doing the crimps but that's easily adjusted and fixed. And looking at our diagram you can see that the plug is actually facing back to front so we've got to make sure that we get the orientation right. Now, on the factory connectors, I'm pretty sure these also all say A, B, C, D, E, F. And on this connector, they say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's about lining it all up and just making sure that we're actually lining up the right things with these pins, just like the picture says. So, if we start at the top, we need a 5 volt wire, which in the Haltech colouring is plain orange. Uh, there is a very very hard to see in the light but there is a yellow one here as well so i just need to make sure that it is plain orange so that one's plain orange and a and a so that will go there I'm not sure of the orientation of this plug i haven't seen it in a while so that one just went in pretty nicely and i heard it very very faintly click the next one is going to be a 5 volt, so I know that I joined those two wires together, so I know that it's going to be that one. Yep, click. That was pretty good. I like that one too. The next one will be one of our signal wires, so that'll be our yellow or our green AVI. That one doesn't feel very nice, so we'll try that again. That could be because I bent that pin a little bit in the crimping process. Straighten him back out. And that's got it going in now. Yeah, that one appears to be in as well, so that's good. Next one is going to be a ground, then a ground, then the signal is going to be the last one going in. A um, bit of a weird orientation for these wires, but we don't make it up. That's what comes from the factory. That one clicked, so that's nice. Um, speaking of the factory pedals, um, while I'm doing this, um, it is probably also good to know that just because I'm using a GM engine and a GM pedal, it doesn't mean that they have to be specific to the same brand or family. Um, we could be using a WRX pedal from a Subaru. We could be using a Nissan drive-by-wire from a 350Z or a Maxima. We could be using a Mitsubishi pedal. It doesn't really matter with the Haltech stuff because the calibration of the ECU um, 
and the settings in the ECU pretty much takes care of all of that part. So it's really whatever you can get your hands on for the right price um, and, and what fits in your uh, application um, up here, which is the tricky part. That's what, that's what really matters, what size and what fits and what's available in your particular region. So just got to get this last one lined up. Click, that's it. So that's actually pretty cool, man. Nice. So now, hopefully, if we pull this apart, hopefully it plugs straight on to our pedal up here. And it might be facing that way. That's it. All right, well, that's us wide. I'll just heat shrink this down a little bit and then uh, that part's done and we'll move up to the buttons and ignition switch. So I've got myself in a little bit of an awkward position here. I, um, I completely forgot I was on such a roll and getting it all done that I forgot about the starter lockout. Um, very, very important for engineering purposes and also when you try and start your car in gear by accident that the car doesn't roll down the road. I've seen it before, it's not great. So, what we've got here is a reverse light and a power. So, uh, these were in the car before, so I've sort of somewhat salvaged and rescued these wires. Uh, I've just put two different identifiers on them, so if the owner or whoever's going to work on the car pulls it apart, they know where they can at least go back. Um, so I can mark this top one red, and then uh, the bottom one will just be black. So that, that should be fine. Uh, just saving myself a phone call on that one for when the owner pulls apart and goes, what do I do now? So we haven't quite decided on which start button we're going to use yet, but um, he's going to do some browsing to figure out what he wants to use so we can figure that part out. Um, what we're actually going to do, we're going to take a 12 volt signal, which essentially comes from the ignition switch. That's going to loop onto one side of the button. The other side of the button, when we engage that button, it's going to get that switch 12 volt and it's going to pump that 12 volts down that other side of that button, which is going to go down the long way into this micro switch so that when this is in park, not reverse, neutral, and then not in any of the gears underneath that, it'll actually have continuity that goes back through and then goes into our ECU trigger wire, which is this yellow wire here. Um, the beauty of the start switch uh, with the ECU is that we can have ground on the other side and turn the pull up in the ECU so that there is a giant point of difference. So it rests at five volts and then when we want it to activate, we pull that signal down to ground. Uh, that way it doesn't false uh, trip or anything like that. So it can only work when the ECU is on. Um, so that's what I might actually do. I might actually run ground to one side of the button and then the ECU signal on the other via the micro switch down here. Um, I've got a wire run from the back of the car, which is here. Uh, this is going into the reverse lights at the back of the car. Uh, the other side of the micro switch here will have 12 volts on it because that's what the reverse lights need to trigger. Uh, seeing as there is no reverse mechanism on this gearbox anymore, uh, there might be, but it's just easier just to use this since we've got it up here. This only works in reverse, so the switch arms itself, and then it will put 12 volts into the lights at the back. Again, uh, this is a requirement for many states, territories in many countries, or uh, for engineering purposes. Um, it's also a good safety measure. I am not very camera savvy at all. I thought it was recording when I did all of these, but it wasn't. So I went ahead and did all these and thought I was filming myself, but failed miserably. Um, but as you can see, I've done a lot of these coil connectors now, which is great. Um, these were fairly simple. These connectors are, are push, push to seat. So um, the gray ones that we took a, a quick shot of earlier were the pull to seat ones where you've got to pull the, push the wire through, crimp it, and then pull it back through. These ones are the very like genuine you push to seat these ones. So um, I've got two more to do, um, which I looked up at the camera and saw that it uh, wasn't flashing, but at least we'll be able to see these last ones getting crimped. And then I'll assemble that connector for you. Oh, 
quickly straighten that pin out. Give that a crimp with the smallest die that we've got available on the crimper. Just get a nice, solid, tight crimp right down on that bit of copper. And then we're gonna use the big roundy one just to crimp that insulation and hold that in place nicely. Just do the ground real quick as well. And then pinch that with the tightest one we've got. Give it everything you've got. That's on there nice and tight, like a doiker. And then we've got that one smashed on as well. So happy with that. Now I've got my diagram, which actually came with my coil set from Airfly Hardware that tell me how to do it. Where like, like the actual pin out of the connector itself. So I'm gonna quickly do my switched 12 volt over there on the far right hand side. Click. Just make sure, so if you're ever not sure which side or which way the pin's meant to go as orientation for the actual uh, connector that you're looking at, there's always a little locking tab. We should hopefully be able to see that come in. Oh, the only one I've stuffed up so far, classic. That will go in and just push forward again. Sometimes I get a little bit caught up depending on the connector. Click, it was a fine little click as that tab went down into that little glory hole. Line this one up so the connector hole is facing up. Slide that in. Click, that one's all seated now. Using a late model LS coil makes simplified wiring so much better for this exact type of wire up. If we were wiring an external module in, we'd have to wire a signal from the ECU itself, loop that into the ignition module, that module then goes out to the coil, and then it's just we've just simplified the amount of crimps, the amount of wire, the amount of issues that may be caused from just the complicated wiring. Um, this just makes it so much easier to wire a car. Um, basically what I've done with the grounds in these is I've brought all those individual grounds to here, and then I've put on a bigger cable through a lug and I've actually crimped that all together. So I've got four big fat grounds which are joined to uh, two coil outputs or two grounds um, for each of those coils. And then we're actually gonna ground those to the head just like a little diagram he's, um, has down here. So that's gonna be very, very easy to ground that. We're just gonna find, that, uh, find a nice big bolt, probably one of the coil bracket bolts on the back of the head. Just a nice, easy place to put it. So I'll cut that down to length. I've left myself you know, probably about that much more than I actually need, but that way I'm definitely gonna to get to where I need to be with the amount of wire I've got. The owner has been watching a lot of street outlaws by the looks of it, because his street car has got these bump and creep buttons. Uh, these can get in the way, particularly when you're driving a car around uh, on the weekend like this guy will want to. Um, these do actually get a little bit annoying. Um, to, to, they're always gonna be in the way. It'll always get tangled, it'll all just end up in this mess and then you'll have to essentially pull off your steering wheel, get it all sorted out again. So what we're gonna try and do in this scenario uh, I just spoke to him on the phone and we agreed that it might be just a good idea if I bring these under the steering wheel here, combine these into a four pin plug because there's two wires in each of these uh, curly cords. Uh, that'll just sit under here, under the steering wheel. And then I'll have the trans brake and creep button on a plug that we can just disconnect very, very easily and then just store up around here somewhere where it's not part of the turning mechanism of the steering wheel. Uh, it'll just make it a little bit neater and a little bit nicer for driving it on the road. When he goes to the drag strip, he can simply plug it in or when he's on the 405, he can uh, get on there and get on the trans brake and then uh, try and win some money. Traditionally in a race car setup, however, uh, a lot of people like to have the trans brake uh, in their B&M shifter. 
um, there is another plate that you can actually replace this plate and you can it has a little button in it uh, that's just a momentary button so you can activate your trans brake there instead of up here uh, the owner wants a trans brake and a creep or a creep and a trans brake it doesn't really matter which way because you can just swap it within the ecu so if you actually you wire it in such a way and you don't like it you don't have to physically rewire it you just assign those pins differently in the ecu but traditionally if you're going to have the trans brake you could have it here in the button and then you would activate the button uh, only under certain conditions you can also have it on this side depending on which country you're in and which side of the car you're sitting on and which side your thumb would naturally go to so um, again we will just run the wires down inside the trans brake mechanism through here uh, through the wiring uh, crevice or crack in here which is made for the wire to go through and then we run it that way instead of running it through the steering column section here and because i'm only human i've made a mistake i, I could edit this video and undo every single bit of work that I've done up that end of the engine and then slide over a new piece of heat shrink here because I forgot. I've been harping on about planning, 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 and thinking and planning the whole video but then I got a little bit excited one day and I just rushed ahead and I forgot. I forgot to get a bit of heat shrink that would fit up there so I'm gonna it's not it's not the end of the world i'm going to get some nice fabric tape or fleece tape i'm going to cover this join so it is nice and so it doesn't fray and fall apart but i'm not angry i'm just, just disappointed So I've done my coils. I don't love the setup of the wiring. I don't like necessarily where it is, but I don't really have a choice, unfortunately, in this tight confined area down the back. Um, so it kind of, it is what it is at the moment for this particular uh, wire up and this particular layout of the coils. Uh, because the leads haven't actually been made yet for this engine, uh, we could juggle the coil order backwards and forwards. I took the best rough sort of measurement I could with a ruler to try and get the best layout for the connectors. It was just a little bit tricky and I just, I don't love it, but it is gonna work. It is done correctly um, and it is hidden. So it's not the end of the world that you can't see how unneat or uneven they are down the back. So. If the engine ever comes out because Rodney comes to visit, um, we might get a chance of neatening up and redoing the lengths on those particular coil plugs if I ever really think or feel that I want to redo that. To help neaten the engine bay up a little bit, uh, the factory loom for the headlights and the blinkers and parkers and all that, even the wiper motor jet, uh, so that the little jets can squirt water up onto the windscreen. Um, all of that wiring, um, classic 80s, used to just come straight out of the strut tower, dangle around the battery here somewhere and split itself in and around all over the place. Uh, and then it would go to the headlight under the radiator and then back up to the other headlight. Um, what the owner has asked is that we could drill a grommet into the strut or air, the, this area of the car, whatever it's actually called, um, and feed the loom instead through here and then tuck it under the uh, part of the car here where the, um, where the fender normally sits. Um, we've tucked it up nice and neatly out of the way. Um, he said, hey, just drill a hole in my car, it'll be fine. And I said, how about no? So he came out and uh, drilled it himself with a hole saw. I've used one of the Haltech grommets that actually comes on the loom. You can actually buy them separately from us in two different diameters. You've got a bigger hole for the bigger looms and there's actually a nice, neat, small one. So we've used a nice, neat, small one down here and we fed the loom back through. Uh, that left us a little bit short for things like the brake warning light and uh, the windscreen wiper motor. So what we've actually done is pulled apart that loom and actually separated that loom back and then just re-taped it all up nice and neat. And this is all factory, so we didn't have to actually extend anything, which is great because 
I didn't really want to. Uh, I've got my little magic carpet which stops my knees getting dirty. Save my dirty knees for my next pay rise that I ask for. This fabric tape is awesome. It's been making auto electricians look impressive for many, many years now. Um, this stuff's great. It really just makes a job look really professional, really finished and very neat, no matter what bastardry is happening underneath, which is great. So I tend to start up one end and then work all the way back. And then even when I get to this join, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna work up to this join and then stop. And then I'm gonna start and cover both of those ends with a new piece of tape and go all the way back so that there's never an exposed or end of the tape that's ever gonna unwrap itself and let itself fray out. I'll show you what I mean by just going around and going up and just slowly spiraling it. And see how much neater it looks already. Um, this look isn't for everyone. Some people prefer the look of DR25 heat shrink and they'll unpick all these connectors and run brand new heat shrink over everything. I just like to get the job done with it looking very neat, very clean. under that connected clip there. Because this isn't in the factory position anymore, I don't really need these clips anymore because they've got nowhere to be. And it gets a little bit tricky at the top, obviously, because my giant roll of tape gets in the way. But I'm trying to get up as high as I can bit up there like I said before so what I'm going to do now is go up this side when I get to here like I said I'm going to start the new piece of tape over both of those and then work my way all the way back down basically to the grommet where it's all neat and protected and nice and it will never fray apart so I've used some of my uh, best trimming skills to uh, get this interior looking mighty schmick again. Actually, well, the best I can, to be honest, because I'm not very good at this part. Um, all these offcuts, um, depending on how nice I feel, I might vacuum them up, but most of them are just under the carpet. So the fuse box can go up there somewhere. I've got a solid state relay, which will crimp on some little eyelets. That's for our transit brake. ECU connector. And I've used my uh, my best carpet maneuvering cutting skills to get around the little grommet. So we've hidden that in there. Give that a little tuck job. And uh, it looks factory. Now that I've uh, gone ahead and cleaned out the lounge room, um, I'm going to maybe sleep up in the... Uh, up in the race seat tonight, so that might be fun. Um, I'm just gonna wire up my trans brake buttons, um, so I'll do that probably tonight, just before I uh, head off to sleep. And then uh, tomorrow will be another day where we'll tackle some fuel pumps and the ignition switch, and we're gonna do the fan at the rear for the transmission trying to think of many other things that we need to do and I think we're getting very very close so that's pretty cool um, the glaringly obvious one obviously is this giant chasm in front of me which is the dash so that'll be the last thing that we plug in I think so we'll uh, we'll do a quick talk about that tomorrow so I might just try and catch some Z's